So the difference between a Filipino martial artist and maybe a karate guy, you know, a karate guy goes down the alley with four bad guys. A karate guy comes out, four bad guys are knocked out. A Filipino goes down the alley, same alley with the same four guys. A Filipino comes back out okay too, but those four guys are dead. So I'm David Scherz with Cinco Terras Arnis, and you're watching FMA Pulse. Uh, I'm a direct student of Senior Grandmaster Max Palin of Cinco Terras Arnis. Um, it's a style of Balintawak in a lot of ways, but we also have the Largo and uh, play in as well, not just Corto. I met Grandmaster Max Palin in 2000, I think, uh, 2002. Uh, he did a seminar in the Northwest where I was living. I was very, very impressed with his style and what he had to offer. Uh, later on, a few years later, I ended up being in the Bay Area, so the first person I sought out was him. And I began to train with him, and I've been training with him for about 10 years now. Uh, and I'm one of his uh, senior students. There's a bunch of us, you know. But I'm one of his last, uh, one of his few active senior students. I have a club here in Union City. And um, which actually was his club, his last club that he had. He's now retired or semi-retired to the Philippines. What we harp on in Cinco Terros and what I found is we work very heavily on the concept of sensitivity and shielding. Um, and what that means is that when you spar with these guys, and this is what happened when I first came down to the Bay Area and sparred with Cinco Terros players, all of a sudden I was getting disarmed left, right, and center. Now my other style, I learned all these disarms, but we could never really pull them off well in Laban Laro. But these guys were sparring to the point where they were taking my stick out of my hand, putting it back in my hand, because they just wanted to keep the flow going. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, that's it, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm not gonna leave until then. So disarming is a big thing for us. Corto, we're very much a Corto style, um, because the philosophy is, if I'm at Largo or Medio, I always have the option to leave, but in Corto, you have to be competent. You, you've now reached a situation where it's, it's, it's escalated. And uh, just like all of us, you know, I was successful in other tournaments and I think everybody who's done martial arts for more than 10 years has a national champion in something, right? Um, but with him, he was able to take my level of, of, of practice and also teaching ability just and skyrocket it. And it was because the way that he teaches the Cinco Terros and his concept with the Guman, which is similar to, if you're familiar with Balintawak, um, Quintadas. I believe your Quintadas are um, sets or, or patterns, correct? Um, what we do is more freestyle. So we have a foundational level for the students, but then it's wiring their brain to operate and sense what's happening without seeing it. And then that foundation comes into, into automatic reaction. I think whenever you start a different martial art, whether you go FMA to, a, to another style or from another style to FMA, you, you gotta just empty it, right? You've already got that one, put it in the case. You know you have the competency. Enjoy what you're about to explore and start all over, right? Because you'll never lose this. But if you want to gain what you're, what you're now starting to study, you got to put that away for a minute. You know, you got to stop speaking that language and speak the new language. It's like when you actually do learn another language. If you're constantly translating your head, you're not really learning the language. You got to let it wash over you. So that was my experience. But yeah, it's tough. I mean, I got whooped up pretty good because you try to close quick and people like that and they smile at you and they ting, 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 ting. I think it's another nice thing about Filipino martial arts. You know, it's everybody's always looking. It's not as formal. Um, I know sometimes that's kind of a knock, but I think it's a plus. You know, you can go to someone else and say, "Hey, how do you do this?" Or they'll just say to you, "You know, do 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 it this way." Great, I'll do it that way. And you knew something new. Single taros has affected the way I fight empty hand, though. Right, and it's giving me a lot more parrying, a lot more of that sensitivity helps. Right, it gets both hands moving instead of just focusing on that one. So. Um, and that's the, you know, people I think misunderstand, laymen I think misunderstand Filipino martial arts where they go, oh, it's a weapons-based system. Hey man, Cinco Terros is, or, or, or Sinawali is showing you, Sinawali is not just for the sake of doing Sinawali, Sinawali is showing you how to parry. It doesn't matter what my tool is. It doesn't matter what's my stick, my knife, my short stick, my palm stick. It's all the same motion or my empty hand, right? But you don't start to click that until a few years down the path, so. You know, we do have the belt ranking system, which is okay, it's, it's borrowed, but we also have um, the tribe or the family. So when you first become a Lakan, you know, you're a Guru. Once you have to go through an initiation to get there. And that initiation doesn't necessarily have to do with martial arts. It's an initiation that obviously I can't talk about, but um, you, you know, you're put out in the middle and you're tested. 
you know, you, you're testing yourself. And I found that really, um, really engrossing. It really, really hooked me because here I had done martial arts already at that time for 20 years, you know, 20 plus years. I'm going, whoa, I've never been in a situation like this. This is different, right? This isn't about technique. This is about you solving a problem and digging down your character and making it happen. Um, and then, our, so then we have the, what we call the Maharlika, and I know a lot of people use the term Maharlika. So once you go through that initiation, now you're closer. Now you're, you're a Tugan, which in, in Legaspi is, uh, is a brother, right? Um, or a, a Mayan, which is a, uh, or a, a Mayan, which is a, a sister, right? Then the next level, you actually have to be in the Philippines, you know, have gone to where Senior Grandmaster grew up and studied and everything, and, and certain things that need to be done there. And then you become a Manoy or a Manai, a big brother or a big sister. And to me, that, that in the whole time, you're becoming more and more into the tribe, into that. And again, being outside, and I'll never be Filipino, but you know, you do feel it comes with responsibility, but that cultural aspect of it is a big deal too, right? And I think it makes it look, I think it makes it better to train as well because it's building that trust, but it also allows you to train harder, right? Because my goal as a, as a fellow member of the same tribe, right, is to train you as hard as possible to make sure anybody else, you know, you and I fight, we're gonna fight hard, man, because we wanna protect what we have, but we never wanna fight so hard that we break each other, right? Because then I've lost a member of the tribe, right? What's, what's that gonna do? So that's a really interesting thing, and I think it's a dynamic, in my experience, that I've only found in Filipino martial arts, and especially in Cinco Terras. When you become a Maharlika, you earn the right to be training more with Senior Grand Master or, or whoever the top instructor is at that place, right? Before that, you're working through the other gurus and instructors. Um, so it's kind of a feeder system. And that's when the physical fitness really becomes, when you're a non-Lacan, you're a beginner, you know, it's more about fun. It's more about keeping people relaxed. I think if you put too much physical fitness in, frankly, I don't want to train you in karate or boxing. I can push you to physical exhaustion. Nobody really gets hurt. But when you've got a stick in your hand, if I push you to physical exertion, the stick goes flying, or you know somebody gets poked in the eye, you know then then you've got an issue there. Um, so I think in one regard, at least in, in my club, I look and you know senior grandmaster would always say you know you're always being evaluated, right, in life or in martial arts. So I'm looking to see who's working on that physical fitness, and then when they start to get close to that lacan, then we start training on the physical fitness part more. And then for the maharlika, absolutely. I mean. You take the beatings. It's just the way it is. But it's, if if you're being taught right, just like we all know, it's it's incremental. So you get used to it. It should never be a shock. Well, because what we train in, right? We're training in, you know, the actuality of, of the blade. We're even with the stick. In Cinco Terros, we have two main targets. There's the temple and the shin. The shin is if I like you and I want to talk to you about why you're upset. The temple is we're done, right? And that's 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 what you train for. All the games that we play, whether it's, it's Balintoak, whether it's uh, Cinco Terros' Guman or what have you, we all know they're games. They're, they're games, they're drills, they're partner drills, they're building up a flow, they're answers to questions. But, you know, and we had this in Karate too, you know, good, good fight. If it's more than three to five seconds, what are you doing, you know? So I think when you have that level and you're gonna have children as well, you really need to filter in character, get them in the right headspace, the right attitude. Um, and, and make sure the character's right to share that with them, especially in, you know, when you're teaching in the U.S., right? Cinco Terros, one of the really impressive things about Grandmaster Max Palin that I, I found out before I was a student is, you know, he would go around to other schools, he'd go to Indonesia by himself, he'd go to Russia by himself, and he would go to other masters, he'd seek them out and train with them and spar with them just to see if what he was doing was valid and could, could, could stand the test. I mean, there's not a lot of, at least in my experience, there's a lot of, a lot of people become complacent when they become a master or a grandmaster. And they say, okay, that's it, I'm here. I'm not gonna compete anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna challenge it anymore because you know, what, if I, what if I'm wrong? Times change, we gotta evolve, right? And the beautiful thing about Senior Grandmaster, which I'll always, always remember with me, is he said, he said two things. He said, one is always be your own hero. So even though he was your instructor, he wanted you, you, know, you go blaze your trail, right? Um, and then actually my first karate instructor always said as well, he said, look, this is, this is a, you're gonna paint a painting. I'm gonna teach you how to use the brushes and the color, but the painting you paint is yours, right? That's, that's your style. Same kind of thing. The other thing with Senior Grand Master though, is anytime we went somewhere, we did a demo, he called it planting seeds. And if we didn't get the reaction we thought we would, maybe, maybe for some reason, you know, that particular group, it just didn't blend. And they didn't wanna, they didn't wanna invite you back. He never said a bad word about them. 
He never said, ah, those guys don't get it. What he said was, we got to work harder. We got to work harder. We don't deserve that yet. You know, we got to work harder. We got to figure it out. We got to get better. And again, you know, that, that continual growth in life and in martial arts, I think that's why we stay with it, right? If it's just about fighting, you can take any athlete out off the street, you know, in six months, 12 months of hard training, they can be a successful stick fighter. And because it's athletic. But, you know, do they have the master? Do they have the other pieces? And that's the part that you want to share. So that's the part you got to continue to develop in yourself. Uh, we went to Naga, and in the main plaza of Naga, he goes, okay, he goes, I got the college club here. So there are about nah, 10 guys, um, 10 college guys uh, from the Single Terrace and East Club for Naga City. He goes, I want you guys to train them. I'm going to go get a haircut. I'll be back for lunch. So there we are training these kids, right? And these college kids are kind of looking ha sideways at me. They're looking sideways at her a little bit, but they're doing it, and they're, they're doing well. This is, there must have been like, you know, 500 to 1,000 people coming and going throughout this whole thing and the whole night here. So he comes back, buys us lunch, then we train for the evening. We're training for them again. And as we were doing this throughout the day, people would always come by with cameras and take a couple pictures because it was kind of weird to see a, a white guy, you know, doing this and, and the whole nine yards. But all of a sudden we saw a really nice TV camera. What the heck's going on, you know? And then the senior grandmaster comes back, they start talking to him and they interview him. And he's like, uh, Dave, come here. So he takes me and he's doing his thing. Pa, 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 pa. He's throwing me all over the place on the concrete. I'm coming up, you know, all sweaty and just full of black soot because, you know, I'm brake falling on the concrete in the whole nine yards. And then they kind of interview me after, you know, when I'm out in all my glory, right? And the uh, senior grandmaster leans over to me and goes, do you know why they interviewed you after the demo? I said, no, sir, why? He goes, because they want to see a white guy get beat up. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. I, I can understand that. I'm okay with the history. But it was the funny part was the college kids, the, the tallest college kid there was pretty buff. Uh, and he was, he was pushing like 5'10 or whatever. He leans over, his name is Jason, and he goes, oh, sir, you're very tough. I will train now. I'm like, okay, that's good. Thank you. You know, you should have done it beforehand, but okay. A really high level uh, American um, who studied Aikido in, 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 in Japan, um, I, I'm stealing this from him, he said it one time, he said the difference between a Filipino martial artist and maybe a karate guy, you know, a karate guy goes down the alley with four bad guys, a karate guy comes out, four bad guys are knocked out. A Filipino goes down the alley, same alley with the same four guys, a Filipino comes back out okay too, but those four guys are dead. I mean, we're in Russia, out in the middle of nowhere, in, in, in Tavir which is where, they're, uh, where some of their special forces are located and stuff. And it's not like it was any big super secret thing or anything, but I mean, he was constantly, these guys look like they were out of central casting, right? They're all like 6'6", six, 6'2", six, slim, wearing black leather jackets, black jeans. They got like some horrible gash or scar somewhere in their skull or their head range. It's like, you know, and, and they're all watching them, you know, and then they kind of come up and test. And then, you know, the two words I know in Russian, are cool and parshut, slash and stab. Because that was his thing, you know, and nobody could get him. You know, 72 years old, trying everything they could, gone. That was just, just the footwork, just the clearness, and you could feel when they're coming. So it's just it's this really cool thing to see. So the best way to get in contact with me is uh, right now through Gmail. So that's dschurz, D-S-C-H-U-R-Z, at gmail.com. That's my email. Um, they could also go to, um, if you're not in the Bay Area or what have you and you're interested, you can also go to Single Terrace International on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page there. I'm one of the administrators, so just send us a, a message and we'll get to you for sure. We have clubs in Delaware, uh, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia area, um, Texas, and then several throughout the Bay Area here, Dublin, Union City, and San Leandro. And then we have clubs in the Philippines and we have a representative in Switzerland as well.